What's up? What's up? What's up? So, welcome. Good evening. You guys sound beautiful. I like listening to you sing. You sing better than myself, which is good. But tonight we're starting off a new series um, surrounded by the the term of injustice. So we're gonna dive right on into that. I'm gonna tell you guys a really crazy story, and we're gonna have a good time. So, to start off. Have you guys ever noticed that in life there is a very specific category? that starts arguments all the time. And it does not revolve around uh, politics or, or um, religion or anything like that. It happens to actually be about like superheroes and superhero movies because what my favorite superhero is, is, is not yours. And you're going to tell me that I'm just a dingus because your superhero is better than mine and my movie's not good, but that one is. So that is one thing that I thought that maybe we could talk about. And for us, we become fans of these movies because we get to see some kind of like horrific tragedy happen. And then this like really buff, good looking dude in some tights and a cape comes in and they save the day, which is awesome. And maybe we like this idea of these superhero S movies because deep down the side, we want a superhero to come and save us from whatever we're dealing with in real life. And so sometimes, um, we see these fictitious heroes dealing with unjust situations, and we see how these heroes uh, fix those situations. Point in blank, if you're at home watching some Batman, and you see the Joker walking down the street holding a little doohickey, hits a button, hospital blows up. We sit back and we're like, wow, the hospital just blew up. Not in a way where we're like, wow, it sucks. We're like, oh yeah, because Batman's going to come and give him like a justice boot right to the side of the dome, and that, that pumps us up. So for us, maybe we want that in our lives, not so much to where, you know, we watch a hospital blow up and we have to go, you know, kick some teeth in, but we want it in our lives because maybe we're dealing with some stuff that we just need help with. Point and example, maybe you're dealing with some type of accelerated class. Maybe you're in like an AP English or, or a math or something. You're like, wow, I really wish someone would help me because I have no idea what's going on. Or maybe you're trying to apply for colleges and you don't understand the first step to do that. Or maybe you don't want to apply to a college and you're trying to figure out, well, should I go to college or should I get a job or should I go to trade school? And maybe it's something even a little bit, a little bit tougher. Like you're at home and you realize that your parents or your grandparents or whoever you might live with, they need help. So you're trying to figure out, well, should I, should I go do the things that I like? Or maybe should I go, you know, get a job and help pay for things? Or should I clean up around the house some more? Or, or, or what? So these are all different prime examples of injustice that we might deal with on a daily basis. And so when I say this word injustice, like something comes to mind, but what comes to mind? And I think that the best way to, to really dive into this is to understand what injustice is. Like, what does it mean? What's the definition of injustice? Well, to make it even simpler, what's the definition of justice? Justice is simply simply just something that's right, or it's equal, or it's fair. So if we're talking about injustice, it's the opposite. It's something that's wrong. It's something that's not right. It's not fair. We don't understand why it happens, but it's something that we have to deal with. But for, for most of us in this room, you didn't need me to, to define justice and injustice for you. Like when I said, we're going to talk about some injustice today, something came to your mind the moment I said it. Now, for some of us, it could have been something that was that was big and, you know, extravagant that's going on in the world, such as, you know, racism or um, maybe it's something like human trafficking or, or poverty or world hunger, and you just don't understand why this stuff's happening. But then again, maybe that's not something you're, you're thinking of. Maybe it's something that's like close and, and, and dear to you, yourself, and maybe you're personally dealing with some type of injustice that that you deal with on a daily basis or that your friends deal with on a daily basis and since you're going through it you just know that specific pain way too deep maybe you don't think of either of those things maybe you haven't experienced this or seen this or dealt with this but for some reason on your TikTok or your instagram or your, your twitter you have found yourself on the side of the social media apps to where your newsfeed is showing you these different wrongs and injustices that are happening throughout the world. And what, what happens when we see these things is that when, when you hear the word injustice because of these things, something comes to your mind. 
and it bothers you. And that, like, that's okay. Like, we, we just learned after a, a good series with Adam that not being okay is okay. We just have to know how to deal with that. So maybe these injustices are the reasons that, that we're not okay. So if I'm being honest, uh, this generation specifically, I, I very much so admire you guys on the fact of that you guys, you guys, I think more than any other generation in years past, noticed injustices and, and try to do something about it. Like this generation is very aware of what's going on in the world, more so than what I was when I was at this stage of my life X amount of years ago. And the question that we all have to face and deal with, it's not, does injustice exist? The question that we all have to deal and face with is, why doesn't somebody do something about this? It's a question that we're going to wrestle with throughout tonight and throughout this whole series, is why doesn't somebody do something about these wrongs, about these unfairs, about these unjust things? What does it look like? Whose job is it to, to go and, and fix these things? So as, as, I, as we get started into this, I know this is going to be a, um, a very tricky and a very tough conversation. And I know it's, it's going to be uncomfortable for some of us because some of us deal with these things. And for some of us, it's going to hurt and it's, it's, it's painful. And I just want to tell you that I know that these things are heavy. And I want to tell you that I'm sorry that you're having to deal with these things. However, we're in a really good place to be able to face these issues. Youth ministry is... is is a place where we develop a family outside of the family. So when you're dealing with these unfair, these wrong things, or whatever's, whatever's affecting you or your school, your friends, your family, you can bring that here in confidence and knowing that everyone here cares for you. There's friends of yours on the floor. There's leaders that, that love and want to help you. And this is a good place to be able to come and talk about these things. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to, we're going to talk about Injustice, how to see it, what to do about it. I'm going to tell you guys, like I said, this super crazy story. And then we're going to go to small groups and have some really good, much needed conversations. So maybe, let's just, let's just think of this in, 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 a, in, a, in a personal way. Maybe you're sitting at school and you've had some, some, some thoughts that have crossed your mind. Like maybe you're sitting in, in the back of your, your science class and the same kid that gets in trouble every single week you might think that it's an unfair reason. Like maybe this kid's not doing anything wrong, but the teacher's always, you know, yelling at him, yelling at her, telling her to go, you know, sit in the hallway, go, go talk to the principal, get out of my classroom, whatever. And it's not fair to you because you don't understand why this kid's always getting in trouble, but the kids in the back of the room that are always, you know, cheating on their tests or talking while you're trying to learn and things, nothing gets said to them. And you're like, why? Like, why is this, why is this happening? Why does, why does this kid always get bullied and no one stand up for it? Why do I have to sit and watch this? Why do, why, does, why do these people, why do these friends of mine, why do these kids in the cafeteria, they make all these, these, these racist and, and, and sexist jokes and they think that it's, it's funny, but deep down they're hurting the people around them that have to hear them because they're jokes that they're, just, they're not funny. Or maybe it's something that's a little bit more, you know, on a personal level. Maybe you're like, man, how come I get to have the luxury to go home every day and on the weekends and know that I can go to my cabinet and make myself a sandwich or, or eat four meals a day. But my friends in, in school or my friends on my, my, my sports team or at choir or at or youth, youth group or whatever, if there's no school, they're not going to get to eat. Like, how's that fair? How's it fair that I have access to all this food, but these people that I care about or these people that I know about, if there's no school, nowhere for them to get their food, they're not going to get to eat. How is this fair? Why doesn't someone do something about that? My point is, is when we see all these unjust, these wrong, these unfair situations, we ask ourselves very tricky and very hard questions. And it makes us wonder maybe how, how other people don't see this, or maybe it makes us wonder how we don't see this. Like maybe we didn't know this was going on until somebody pointed it out. And you're like, man, how did I never see this before? Like, how did I not know this was going on in, in the world or even just in your, your own classrooms or your own friendships. And let me be honest to tell you that this isn't the first time that this problem has, has arose. Like Jesus made it, made it a, a repetitive thing to point out wrongs and issues that, that people had and that people were dealing with that people around him didn't see before. 
And one of the questions that people would regularly ask Jesus, they'd be like, yo, Jesus, who's cool with you, bro? I mean, they probably didn't call him bro. I wouldn't call Jesus bro. But they, they asked him, like, who's good with you? Like, what, who, 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 are the, who are the right people around you? And, and just like many, many times, over many, many examples, Jesus would answer these questions, not just with a straightforward answer, but with a story that revealed more, more issues or more examples that he wanted everyone to be aware of. Prime example would be uh, Matthew 25, verses 41 through 46, which Ethan has it for me because he's the man, and it's going to pop up on the screen in just a moment. There it is. This says, Then he will also say to those on the left, Depart from me, for you are cursed, and to the eternal fire prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't take me in. I was naked, and you didn't clothe me. I was sick and in prison. You didn't take any care of me. Then they too will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or as a stranger or without clothes, or sick or in prison, and not help you? And then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So you see in that in that. In that there's verses, there's five verses. Jesus answered questions with a story. He answered them um, revealing a bigger truth. Uh, in this case, he used these examples to explain the differences between, between righteous and, and unrighteous, between those on, on the right side and, and the wrong side. And if we think back to like our superheroes, like we, we have the righteous and the unrighteous. We have the good and the bad. We have Batman and you know the Joker or Spider-Man and the Green Goblin like we have these things that are very blatant and very in front of us So again, I, I reiterate the question that people would ask Jesus is who's good with you like who who is on your side? And in this story Jesus would distinguish between the righteous and the unrighteous the good guys and the bad guys by how they would respond to the lack of needs towards people who needed them the ones that Jesus defines as as, as prisoners and, and as the hungry and as the, the, the sick or strangers, these people who, who, in other words, need the most help or, or feel the most pain or go through the worst treatment, how do you treat those people is what Jesus is saying. He, would, he asked these people these questions. He said, when did, you, when did you feed me when I was hungry? When, when, did, when did you give me water when I was thirsty or clothe me when, when I didn't have any? And the, the key part to what how they responded was they answered with first three words, when did we? When did we? When did we not see you hungry? When did when did I not see you thirsty, Jesus? When did I see you as a stranger or or without clothes? When when did I see this? Almost as if they were implying or saying, Oh no, 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 Lord, not me, not me. No, I I, I didn't see you without clothes. I didn't see you hungry. I, I didn't see you thirsty. They're saying it as if like, oh yes, we, we're always there to help, but we, we didn't see it. Now Jesus had not physically been, been hungry or thirsty or without clothes. He was, he was making a point that these people not only didn't do something, they didn't allow themselves to see something, which I think is, is, an issue with with us as well because when we don't when we don't see someone that needs our help or see something that needs our attention we're not just missing out on this unjust situation this unfair or this wrong situation we just we don't see it and Jesus takes personal offense to these things he takes personal offense that we don't see these things as if we don't see him because if you're if you're missing out if you're not seeing these things then we're simply just missing out on a part of what it means to follow Jesus Christ himself. And this story is all about who is cool with Jesus. And he clearly shows us that his people are people who see and act when they encounter these, these wrong or unjust situations. He makes it very clear. My, my, my people, when they see these situations, they're going to see it and they're going to act on it. So how do... How do we see and act on these things? 
Well, we have we have three three easy steps as to how we should see these things, act on these things, and, and pretty much what to do about them. But before I talk about these three easy steps, I'm going to tell you guys this absolutely crazy story. It, it's 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 wild. Okay, so I want you guys to picture there's there's this this crowd of people, this town of people have come have gathered together, and and they're here, and there's these two males, there's these two guys. That have to come face to face with a very wrong situ- a very wrong and unjust situation. Now these two guys are polar opposite people, right? So guy number one, guy number one's a good dude. Like he's a very righteous person. He he's lived a very perfect life. He hasn't done no wrong. He does what 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 God would want him to do. He's just a he's a great guy. Like you want this guy in your corner every day of the week. But then we have guy number two. Guy number two is a really bad dude. Like, guy number two is a liar. He's a thief. He's a murderer. He'd spit on your cat. He's a very, very bad guy. Like, he's like the worst of the worst. And so these two people were brought before this town of people, and they they were told, we're going to vote. You have guy number one, super righteous, super good guy, does what he's supposed to do. Then we have guy number two, very bad guy, doesn't like cats, he's a thief, he's a murderer, bad dude. One of these guys is going free. One of these guys is, is leaving today to do what they want to do. The other guy we're going to murder. We're going we're gonna to take this guy, we're going to kill him. So we need to vote. We need to vote on which person is going free and which one is going to die. So as if it's not crazy enough already, this is where it gets crazier. The town, they say, all right, let that murderer go, we're killing the other guy. That's insane. Like, why would you? Why would you pick that? For one, number two, what's super crazy is these two guys. Their names are Jesus Christ and Barabbas. Barabbas gets to go free, where Jesus Christ is. Then he's belittled, he's tortured, he's insulted, he ha- he endures in extreme pain and punishment for no reason, and then he he dies on the cross for us. So that we can live these lives that, that we don't deserve. What gets even more insane is, is when you realize, like, like deep down, like we're, we're all a Barabbas. Like, we're sinners ourselves. Like, we don't deserve this just amazing, wonderful life that we get. But Jesus Christ endured this unjust situation. He went through this pain of getting nailed to a cross and getting just belittled and made fun of. So that way we got to experience life the way he wants us to and to live it out. And lucky for us, he left us a plan. I mean, we have a blueprint. He left us a very fine knit plan and blueprint in, in our Bibles to, to, to live the life that he wants us to. So that way we can go out and, and make a difference and, and live in this world like he wants us to. And even more... Importantly, inside of this book, inside of this, this, this blueprint, this, this plan for us for life, there's, a, there's a, segment, a segment of it that talks about what he wants us to do and how to deal with unfair or unjust situations. So what do we do about it? Like we see these things in school, we see it on TikTok or the news, or we see it firsthand or we're experiencing it ourselves. How do we deal with this? Number one, we have to get close enough to see it. Like you have to allow yourself to get close enough to see the issue. You need to, 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 to do this. You might ask, like, how, how? Like, how do I get close? Like, I'm, I see it, but what, how do I get closer? Like, what do I do? Number one, just pray. Like, we got to get close enough to see it, so let's pray. Pray and ask God, God, open my eyes. Let me see what you see. Let me see the world how you see the world. Let me understand where the pain's at. Let me understand where my pain's at. And then once we get close enough to see it, once he shows us, you know, if we're not experiencing ourselves, show me who is. And once he shows you who is, go talk to that person. Go talk to someone who's just different than you. Maybe you're dealing with something, don't know how to deal with it. Someone else might be dealing with the exact same thing. Or maybe they're dealing with something completely opposite. Go talk to people that are, that are different, that are new, and, and try to understand their, their unfair, their unjust, their wrong situations that they've had to deal with. And not only just like understand it, like, like try to learn from it, right? Try to get, uh, be courageous enough to listen. 
that's number two. Be curious enough, courageous enough to go and listen. So number one, we got to get close enough to see it. How do we do that? We pray. Try to find people that are different. Try to talk to us. Get close enough to see it. Number two is be curious enough to listen, right? So we find these situations. We find these people. They're like, yes, I'm dealing with this. I don't know what to do. Yes, my, my, my best friend's dealing with that. This isn't fair. Why doesn't someone do something about this? Why doesn't anyone do something about that? Why is this a thing? Well, get close enough to listen. I don't know. Tell me about it. Let me hear about it. Let me, let's, let's sit down. Let's have some really deep conversations, and let's learn about it. Like, let me learn your issues. Let me learn what you're seeing. Imagine yourself in, in their shoes while they're trying to explain this to you to where you're listening and learning as to what's going on. And this is going to be weird. Like, it's going to be very uncomfortable. It's not, it's not going to be an easy conversation. Like, this is going to be a very real conversation. And it's going to be very tempting for you to just stop and, and just leave. Like, oh, man, I, this, is, this is a lot. Like, I'm, I don't know if I can deal with that. Don't. Just, just stop and listen. Learn. Because this type of uncomfort that you're going to feel, that you're going to see, this is, this is an uncomfort which is a good sign. It's a sign that you're, you're beginning to see things the way that God wants you to see them. So, so don't, don't get scared or timid and just get up and leave. Like, listen, like dig your heels into the dirt and, and try to really understand and learn what's going on. Really listen. Be very curious. Be a curious listener. Understand what they experience or what they see. And then number three, be courageous or brave enough to name these things. Like, if, it, if it's wrong, just say it. Like, okay, that's wrong. Like, don't, don't do that. That's, that's, that's wrong. If it's unfair, just call it that. If you see something that's not fair, call it exactly what it is. Because when you see these injustices around you or inside of you, you, you need to address them. You need to be courageous enough or brave enough to call it exactly what it is. Identifying injustices takes away some, if not all of its power, because it can't hold you back anymore. It can't, like we can't change what isn't seen. So if, you, if you're seeing something and you don't bring it to light, how are you going to change it? If you see some kid getting stuffed in a locker, like, up, oh, not dealing with that. How are you going to change that? You can't. You got, you're going to have to address it, bring it to light. If you're dealing with something personal deep down inside, it's just going to keep eating at you until you bring it to light. Because once you, once you bring it to light, it's, it's out there, right? Like you, you're dealing with these very hard, hard situations. You're seeing these very hard and wrong situations. Get it out there. Now it's out there and you can deal with it because not only do you see it, but your friends can see it, your parents can see it, your small groups can see it. Like every, everyone, once you bring it outside and bring it to the light, everybody can see it. So what I'm getting at with all of this is just remember that your three steps. Number one, Get close enough to see it, okay? Pray to ask God to, to allow you to, to see things the way that he sees them. Number two, be curious enough to listen. And not only listen, but try to learn. And number three, be courageous or brave enough to name it. What all this is getting at is that, like, this generation is, is phenomenal. Like, this, you guys are a great generation to go and do something about it. Like I already told you, I very much admire the fact that you guys are very aware of these unjust and wrong situations that, that go on in the world. Like, I, I promise you, when I was, like, this stage of my life, I, I didn't focus on these things. And that's, that's on me. That's my, that's my own fault. But this generation as a whole notices these things. And I really think that this generation is one that can do something, like, right now about it. Like, I don't think this is a, a we'll wait to the next step of life generation. Like, this generation is it the generation to go and do something about these very wrong situations. Which is exactly why we have our small groups. Because our small groups is a place where we can have very real and very difficult situations with things that we see, things that we experience. And your small group leaders, your, 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 your friends in small groups, they're the perfect people that when you're dealing with something, when you're seeing something, when you know of someone going through something, they're very, your small group leaders and your friends are people who are here because they, they love and care about you. And when you talk about these things and you're trying to process it and discover new ways to, to see these things or deal with these things, 
everyone here in your small group is wanting to go through this life change and this life reasons with you. Like they want to help you through it. And that's good. That's what we need to do. We need to build a team, a, a mini army to, to go and, and face these things and help each other deal with them. There's a, there's a very a very famous writer. Her name is Maya Angelou. I don't know if any of you know her or if I even said her name right. I think it's how you say her name. She, she writes about injustice often, very often. And she has a, a really phenomenal quote that I want to share with you guys so we can kind of ponder on that when we go to small groups and try to, try to figure out, have some deep conversations that are very much so needed to learn what the next step is for us to dealing with these situations. Like, we, well, let's go have conversations and learn about it, bring our problems to life, and let's just go talk about them. And her quote is, do the best that you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. So do the very best you can until you know better, until you know a better way, until you know better of, of something, of anything. And then when you know that better, Step it up a notch and do better, right? So all we need to do is we just need to remember our three steps. Number one, get close enough to see it. Number two, be curious enough to listen. And number three, be courageous or brave enough to name it. Bring it to light. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit the like button.